Welcome to Season 2 of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm Amy, and this season I'll share all the tips, tricks, and hacks you need to get healthy with an MTHFR mutation in a step-by-step, week-by-week process. I can't wait. This week, let's talk about nitric oxide, MTHFR, and NOS3. MTHFR is well known for causing heart health issues. It's directly responsible for raising homocysteine levels, it's implicated in troublesome blood clotting, and it's indirectly responsible for making it harder to make adequate nitric oxide. All of this is compounded if you have MTHFR and another gene SNP called NOS3. So first, what is nitric oxide? Nitric oxide is the primary substance responsible for keeping your blood vessels open and relaxed so that blood can flow through in an easy way. Without it, your blood vessels tighten and constrict, which drives up your blood pressure and reduces oxygenation of your tissues. The primary function of your blood is to carry oxygen to all of the muscles, organs, and tissues that need it, and nitric oxide makes this happen. Nitric oxide also helps to keep your platelets, those tiny little flakes in your blood that make up blood clots, nice and smooth and slippery. It inhibits platelet aggregation and adhesion and even helps to destabilize any small clots that have formed in error. Blood clots that are supposed to happen when you're injured are a good thing. They keep you from losing too much blood. Blood that clots for no reason, however, is deadly. That is what lies underneath the bulk of the heart attacks and strokes out there. You want blood that's smooth and free of clots. Nitric oxide also helps with the growth and formation of new blood vessels. It's pretty important. MTHFR affects nitric oxide as well. As you know, it's part of the folate cycle, turning inactive folate into the active form 5-LMTHF. The folate cycle needs to spin in order for a linked pathway, the BH4 pathway, to also spin. The BH4 pathway is mostly known for neurotransmitter formation because this is where we see serotonin and dopamine starting to happen. But it's also necessary for nitric oxide synthesis. There's a detailed pathway document in the show notes if you really want to dive in, but suffice it to say... If MTHFR is sluggish, then nitric oxide synthesis is also sluggish. So let's talk about this NOS gene. NOS stands for nitric oxide synthase, and there are three different forms depending on where they're located in your tissues. NOS1 is also called neuronal NOS, or NNOS. NOS2 is also called INOS, or inducible NOS. And NOS3 is epithelial NOS, or ENOS. ENOS, or NOS3, is extremely important here because it's most represented in the epithelium, which is the lining of your blood vessels, and so has the greatest direct impact on vessel dilation as well as clotting. Nitric oxide is made from arginine, which is one of the building blocks of protein, and so that matters for proper functioning, as does calcium. Under normal circumstances, NO synthase is dependent on the level of calcium within the cell, and so you have to have that for NO to work. Enosynthase can also be influenced by injuries, such as shear stress, that require changes to blood flow. So let's talk about the NOS gene SNP. The NOS3 gene SNP, as you might have guessed, has its biggest consequences in heart and cardiovascular health, but also influences some tissues that rely heavily on constant, tightly regulated blood flow, like your brain or a developing fetus. It's especially likely to create problems in situations with overlapping pathology, like an NOS3 gene SNP with diabetes, which also decreases circulation. Or, I might add, an NOS gene SNP with an MTHFR gene SNP. Common signs of problems with the NOS3 gene include chest pain with exertion or away from it, cold hands and feet, which is basically indicative of poor circulation, high blood pressure, erectile dysfunction, migraines, stroke, chronic sinus issues, blood clots, congenital heart defects in babies born from mothers with untreated NOS3 polymorphisms, arteriosclerosis or hardening of the arteries, preeclampsia in pregnancy, that's also a risk with MTHFR alone, 
and family or personal history of Alzheimer's disease, which is also a risk with MTHFR alone. There's many ways you can support nitric oxide synthesis in your body, with or without an NOS3 gene SNP, or with or without MTHFR. So here's a few. Step one, eliminate folic acid. Now, I know you're tired of me saying this for MTHFR, but folic acid also causes a decrease in BH4, which is bad for NOS and your neurotransmitter production and your methylation and your nitric oxide synthesis. Another thing you can do, which is a bit surprising, is hum. ENOS is highly expressed in your sinuses, so that same epithelial tissue in your sinuses. And humming causes a 15 to 20 fold increase in nitric oxide synthesis in those tissues. And you can then inhale that nitric oxide into the rest of your body. This is part of why breathing through your nose at night is so important for tissue oxygenation. A wonderful study published in the journal Medical Hypotheses showed that not only will strong humming for an hour every evening clear up nasal blockages and sinus infections, it also increases your functional nitric oxide. Eat a low glycemic index diet. So lowering your blood sugar fluctuations as well as your blood sugar in general will help your nitric oxide, your heart, and your risk of diabetes in the long term. This means that every meal and snack you have should be a balance of proteins, good fats, fiber, complex carbs, and sugars. A big old pop or candy bar in the middle of the afternoon with no real food to back it up is kind of the opposite of this. Breathe through your nose. So talk to your doctor if you have a chronic issue with mouth breathing, especially at night, or try mouth taping at night, and also make sure that any larger issues like a deviated septum get addressed. Deep breathing exercises for one minute three times a day can really help as well. Exercise. I mean, exercise is great for everything, and a healthy NOS3 is no exception. Stop smoking and stay away from chemicals. So chemicals in your environment can impair your NOS function by reducing the amount of BH4 you produce, as well as impacting glutathione levels. And NOS needs support from glutathione so it doesn't get into the messy uncoupling situation. Also, good dietary sources of arginine, calcium, and vitamin B2 will help. Whether you have an NOS3 polymorphism or not, supporting a healthy nitric oxide function is crucial for a healthy heart, brain, and interestingly, healthy sinuses. It's especially important if you have an MTHFR polymorphism because we do have tendencies towards compromise in this area. Plus, most of the steps here overlap with the MTHFR lifestyle. So if you do the MTHFR lifestyle and then add some deep breathing or humming, you're there. Thank you so much for listening today. And if you happen to want a free MTHFR basics course, plus to be added to the list for the beta version of a new MTHFR for Life course, well, then you had better visit me on Teachable. You can find more information at courses.tohealthwiththat.com. I would love to see you there.